Good morning, Steve. Good morning, Sean. Good morning, Happy everybody. Morning. Welcome to Inside the Huddle. Good morning. And by the way, everyone, yesterday was Sean's birthday, if you didn't know that. So happy birthday, Sean. Thank you very much. I look at your older, yes? No, you look good. You're wiser, I hope. You're wiser. We'll find out because today's topic is going to be about memory. So, yeah, well, we'll yeah, you need both. But I think what we'll hopefully be able to role model and demonstrate is what comes from the ability when you've internalized your value just how easy handling objections uh, can be. Uh, but, before, but before we do that, um, big week th this week. Oh right? my gosh. Yeah, so uh, congratulations to everyone on the call. Compass is, uh, if you haven't seen, then you've been in a cave. Last week it was announced we were the number one brokerage in the country. And of course we're number one in San Diego. And tomorrow our fearless leader, Robert Refkin is gonna be in town and uh, really excited about that. It's been a couple of years since he's uh, been in our neck of the woods. And so I hope everyone can make it to Ale Smith Brewery because if you haven't been around Robert, um, you'll, you'll get a chance to really see just how dynamic and uh, and um, just how agent-centric he is. I mean, he really is the real deal and what you see is really what you get, He is what you see. I agree. I, I love listening to him speak. He's yeah. a very inspiring person. So I know this has been said before, but I keep coming back to it. Compass hasn't even been around 10 years, less than 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. Less than 10 years. And uh, it's quite For an accomplishment. One. Yeah. It's a And what San Diego, less than four years coming up on our four year anniversary. Coming up. Well, just over four years, right. Or right at the four year mark. I mean, we think we started right in January. The first, uh, I think uh, Melanie and I were hired on. Uh, the first week in January of 2018. Two of you were working out of one little little closet office, right? Yeah, we had a WeWork kind of space uh, off of High Bluff in Del Mar. And uh, just a real quick story, when Melanie and I showed up that first day, we literally looked at each other and said, what do we get ourselves into? They, <laughs> it, we, we walked into a WeWork space that had nothing in it. 30 minutes later, we hear a knock on the door. I kid you not, it was a Staples box that had copying paper, magic markers, uh, staples, staplers. And we were like, what are we supposed to do with this? It was, it was really pretty comical. And, uh, and then, you know, when we had the event in Carlsbad, uh, when Sharad was in town a couple weeks back, you and I were standing in the back. That's a true story. I'm That's on a too, as a witness. <laughs> yeah. And I remember sitting next to Sean and looking out and I was really filled with uh, tremendous pride because it really is something to, to, to remember that, that that humble beginning and, and see where we've come. It, it really is something I'm, I'm very proud of. And I, I know you are as well. I think anyone that works for the company, agents and employees alike, we have a lot to be proud of. So yeah, that, enough of that, but yeah, really exciting. Well, if I can tie it back to all of us also, it shows that there are no limits. A, a box from Staples in an empty office four years ago to well-established number one in the entire area, the entire region, and now number one in the country. It, it, anything is possible if you put your mind to exactly what your focus is, yeah. and then you work at it consistently every single day. You know, hey, no, Sean. No, 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 no. Yep. Sean, I think, I think that is so important to say because even more than putting your mind to a goal is to say the goal is really limitless because that's really what we thought. Like we didn't even know what the, the, the height was or what the goal was. We knew it was to kind of get it going, but we didn't know the, the ultimate limit. We, and I still don't think we do. I think we're not there yet. Well said. I don't yeah. think there is one. No. I suppose no. when every agent works for Compass. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> we don't want them all though. I hate no, that. that's <laughs> true. No, we don't. I love that we're picky. So today, we, we there was so much uh, positive reinforcement last week about, yeah, please do another more on scripts and responses to questions where we thought we would go at it again today. Right, right. And uh, and it starts with really, you know, I'll let, you know, however we want to start, we can either role model some of these scripts or talk about what makes for a great response to an objection how to process that before you you know you even open your mouth uh because my first tip will be you know number one I, I started the meeting by saying when you understand your value objection handling is very easy and i really believe that uh, um, i think all of us know that we 
bring a lot of value to a listing presentation or meeting with buyers. Um, but what dissuades us or what uh, moves us is what they say when we're not expecting them to say something. And it usually has to do with them making a statement that is ultimately diminishing our value. And so that, that, that's something to talk about. But my number one tip would be um, the best way to handle objections is to ask more questions. So the process for me has always been listen, ask, explore. Listen, ask, explore. So, um, and, and let maybe, so what do you think, Sean? We could either talk about how you set up the objection handling tech your techniques or your scripts and then maybe take some from the audience or we can role model some specific ones. I, I'm, I'm all yours. I mean, I'm easy here for everybody. I'm, I'm kind of with you. I think, I mean, we'll give some scripts, but what really matters is understanding why objections exist and how to frame your thought process and your responses. That's right. Scripts are easy. They're written down. And by, so the first thing I want to say about scripts is I have agents, I work with agents all over the nation, and every one of them, when you introduce the script, says, oh, I don't want to do that. That doesn't sound like me. That's not how I talk. And probably most of you have felt that way. And I get to give my favorite coaching response. I don't care. Memorize the damn script. Here's what really happens. You memorize, you internalize, then you customize. I have hundreds of scripts in my head. Not a one of them ever comes out beginning to end the way it was written. It's a part of a script, right, Steve? A part of another script, but they all have to be in there first. Memorize, internalize, right. then you can customize it. It never sounds scripted. Well, internalization is the key uh, because I think all of us have been around people when we can tell they're reaching for words, and it, it comes across very inauthentic. Like that, that doesn't seem like you're when someone's reading a script, it's so obvious that they're not listening to you. And when someone is reading a script, what they're telling you. Uh, neurolinguistically is that they care more about their need being met than yours. This is why it's so important to ask questions and, and explore a little bit without, and there's an art to that too, because you can ask too many questions in the exploratory phase that can be like you're drilling a tooth, you know, like, okay, enough, so now what, what's going on here? But, but it's really important to explore so that you can understand really the underlying issue, because in many objections, I think the origin of an objection is the lack of perceived value, right? And just about anything, right? It's, I have a perception of value and this isn't it. And, and so the, there arises the conflict that you have with your client. And, you know, again, another number one tip is whenever I've been in those situations, the first thing I, I want to do is join forces with them. Look, I appreciate how you feel. Help me understand, um, and again, a great, uh, help me understand how you've arrived at this place or at this thought or this belief. Like, I agree. Any, so anyway, any thoughts on that? I mean, I, I think it's really well, important that we don't just go right into locking horns and defending a position. It's ex ask a question, explore. I Absolutely. It, and there, the, I love what you said. There's a fine line between exploring the objection and becoming a reporter. We're right. not here to, to grill them with 20 questions, but you have to, I go back to, first of all, most objections are really expressions of fear, misperceived value and fear. We're asking them to make a big, hard decision. Deciding to list your home. Do I want to sell it? Is this the right agent? Is this the right brokerage? Is this the right price? Am I going to find my new home? It's a scary, scary <laughs> thing. And most people don't like making scary decisions. What they do like is crossing things off a list. I'm going to talk to four agents. And what they want to do is cross all four agents off the list and then say, woohoo, that felt good. Yeah. Except they don't have an agent and their home's not listed yet. You have to help them get past their own fear. And it starts with your value. You have to know your value. That's right. There's no way to convey to them that sense of trust they need to have if you don't have it in you. So we're not, that's not our uh, the show today, but but no. that's extremely important is that you know you are what's best for them. That, that, hey, Sean, can I, yeah. can I add something here? I think the, the, the conveying calm and confidence is so critical when you're having an objection. Because when you, when you ask, like to Steve's point, I want, let's explore more about your question. Tell me why this is important to you. Or I understand why you might think that. Or I understand your concern. 
you just show such a you just show such a confidence that you know when someone else is asked that question and they start rattling out things that make no sense and they get flustered it just shows really they don't understand their own value absolutely Great. that's a really really good point and i think that melanie to again uh the confidence part comes from you know when i talked a moment ago about inauthentic responses um we all know that there are some basic objections in our business right we're going on a listing appointment and i don't want to rattle them off but if we need to we can but that it'll be around commission, it'll be around your experience, uh, both uh, in the business and around the neighborhood, yada, yada, yada. So we know we're running head first into those questions in just about every single scenario we will we'll find ourselves in. Um, and, and really a trick here is that every battle is usually won before the, before the fight is had, right? So preparation here is the key. And so what most agents are trained to do is here, master these scripts, but they don't get into dialogue. They just have a script. And so when they hear the objection, they go, oh, there it is. And it, like, I can't miss this opportunity to do a dump on you. And, and it comes across just like that. Like you are just almost reading verbatim the, what you, the track you've mastered in your head mm -hmm. without trying to connect emotionally. Help me understand why selling your home, well, you need to sell your home quickly. Oh, well, let me tell you what we got for that, right? As opposed to tell me what's important to you about selling your home. Define quickly for me first. So and part, of, part of that is that most of the time they don't know. No, they, If you believe that they know what they're asking, you're going to run yourself right into a dead end. People, and so what, that's the, the, what we want to do is just clarify. And their answer will help tell you which script to use or where to go. And I'll give you an easy example of how we can mess this up. When someone says, you're, you're a newer agent, someone says, tell me how experienced you are. Well, if you don't have a lot of experience, then then coaches will train you to use the team concept. Well, we sold 100 homes last year, and right, we do right. this, and we do that. And you know what the response from the seller is? That's too bad. I was looking for someone who was young and hasn't had any listings, and they were hungry, and they're going to give all their time to me. Next. Yeah. Boom! I screwed it up because I didn't explore what they meant by the question before I answered the question. Tell That's me what how many I'm homes you sold. The, thinking. Uh, the way I'd always answer that question when I was a rookie, how many homes have you sold in this neighborhood? That's a that's a really great question. Help me understand before I answer that, what's important to you about understanding how many homes I've sold in this neighborhood? Right. And there's multiple scripts we can go with after that about homes in the neighborhood. Most of the so time, find, yeah, I was going to say, most of the time you'll find it really has nothing to do with how many homes you've sold in the neighborhood. No. A lot of times, what could it be? It could be that when they bought that house, right, they bought from an agent who didn't have familiarity with the market, didn't have familiarity with that neighborhood. You may live in the neighborhood. They're asking you that question, and you're nervous. Oh, my God, I'm brand new here. How am I going to handle this? And you start getting flustered when, in reality, if you know your value and you ask that question, what's important to you about working with someone in this neighborhood? Or Tell me, tell me why, that, why you're asking this question. Help me understand. And they're going so to here's, get you. Yeah, go ahead. I, I'm gonna, there's a, there's a basic formula I use for what you're saying. Always repeat and affirm. Yep. Always, always, always repeat and affirm in all parts of the conversation. The most important thing you can do is make someone feel heard. They've done studies. Telling someone that's a, that, that's a great choice. They did restaurants in New York. They took all these the wait staff and split them in two. And half of them said, oh, that's a great order. Oh, that's the best thing on our plate. Oh, you really know your whatever something you would think would be very helpful. The other half simply repeated the order and then affirmed it. Steak and mashed potatoes, great. Peas, fantastic. That's it, repeat and affirm. At the end of the two-week study, the people who did repeat and affirm had 70% more tips, 70%. Just repeat and affirm what they say, then ask a question. Great point. Well, exactly what Steve said. Why is that important? What about that matters most to you? and let them answer, then you can go into a script. And then I used to tie it down. Is there anything else I need to know about this question that I haven't asked, right? Like in other words, is there anything else that you need to know about my experience besides how many homes I've sold in this neighborhood? Well, tell me about your background before real estate or whatever, you know, hopefully it'll lead you right, they'll lead you right into a, a sweet spot where you can speak with, that'll give you confidence. You know, tell me about your background before you got, why'd you get into real estate? 
That will happen if you drill, if you, if you continue down that path, is there any other thing you'd like to know about my experience or maybe why I got into real estate? Then you can lead them and they'll say, yeah, I'd like to know more about that. What did you do before? So that, that's the extension of the, it's just probably too technical for this, but rail and repeat is the, is the acronym I use. <clears throat> repeat and affirm, isolate, love me, then repeat the, the objection back. Yeah. So if someone says, you know, what's your commission? My commission, fantastic. Repeat, affirm, isolate. Tell me, other than the commission problem, is there any other issue? And then before they can answer, I'm going to give them three tie downs. Three love me's. You you really liked the marketing plan we had, didn't you? I down. And and the uh, pricing for the home seemed to match exactly what you thought, didn't it? Tie down. We do three tie downs. Three times make them say yes, I love you. Then you go back and re isolate. So it sounds like if we if we can get on the same page on commission, we're ready to sign today, aren't we? Repeat, affirm, isolate, love me, and then go back. Now what you've done. It's taken away all their other smoke screens. Because remember, none of these are actual problems. These are all ways that they can avoid having to make the decision. But you've now painted them into a corner of one smoke screen, which you then handle with your objection handler, and there's nowhere else to go. They sign the list. Is that too technical for this? No, no, I, I think it's, uh, it's the process. And uh, no, I, I agree with everything there. So there's nothing else I have to add to that. Um, what I what I think we might want to do when the time we have, because we're already at seven seventeen, is maybe oh, yeah. have either in the comments or if you want to come live on screen, because we don't want to speak to inattention either. And that's a key, by the way, objection handler, right? You don't a lot of times when we hear something and we know we we're loaded up in, in all of our experience and having just mastered what we we're talking about, uh, you still have to find I find myself, Sean, having to resist in my own good advice here or a temptation to to trespass on my own good advice because when someone throws up a softball it's like i just want to you know i can i can swat that swing at it yeah yeah so um and so with that said i think maybe what we could do is just take a few either live and a uh, question yeah, throw some objections out and we can work we can noodle through those so what are you, what are you guys hearing that is causing you like what would be if we could handle one or two objections in the time we have left um, that would help you build your confidence or hear from some couple of old masters here like how we would approach it that would be beneficial uh, to put it in the chat box or come on screen just unmute yourself and let's do this john's got one all right john good morning uh good so morning. i'm dealing with this one this morning because i know i i've got a call coming up uh uh, he wants me to list the place, and the market is so hot, it's going to sell instantly. So what's the lowest commission you can do for me? Perfect. Love it. Uh, well, that's an interesting question, uh, Mr. Seller. Um, obviously, this this is this the first home that you've sold? I mean, this isn't your first home that you've sold, correct? And have you experienced a market like this before? Because I can tell you as real estate professional, I find these uh, these are really unprecedented times and uncharted waters when a home could go to the market and literally before God gets the news, you've got five offers. Um, and I appreciate the fact that you might think, then what have I done to earn that? But uh, speaking for myself, um, I, I believe that our number one job has always been and will always be uh, to risk manage, uh, meaning houses sell houses um, buyers, sellers, escrow companies, uh, the competing agents, uh, sometimes they can uh, make some mistakes and, and, and possibly screw up the sale. So the value that I bring, the fact that the house sells in a day or two by no way undermines the value that I will bring in, in sh sheepdogging or, or, or watching this transaction through from start to finish because it's when pe after people sign things that the real risk occurs. And when you have so many buyers out there, especially when you have two thirds of the buyers out there coming from the investment side who are tying up multiple properties at once, you want an experienced agent that can sift through that to make sure you're getting the right buyer, not just a buyer. And, and so again, that, that this is where the value of having an experienced agent and someone who acts as on your behalf as a risk manager, safeguarding your interests is really what's most important and how I earn my keep. Does that make sense? So that's why right. I got at that. And there's an opportunity here too. 
so it's going to sell quickly. What's the lowest commission? Fantastic. I understand that. This is part of why my clients love me. And this is part of why I earned the commission. Do you think it's necessarily in your best interest to allow this home to be sold in one day? Can I share with you some doubts about that? The highest price may come in on the first day, but is that necessarily the best offer? I suggest to every one of my clients that we be on the market for a minimum of one week to two weeks because there's more than just price. Who's the agent on the other side? Who's the broker on the other side? Who's the lender? How's the offer been written? I know most of the players in this game, and I can help you choose a, a, the other side that's going to actually get the job done. And that's how we start eliminating all the risk, at which point I go into Steve's. And by the way, most of what you're hiring for, hiring me for happens after we go into escrow. That's right. You can also go into the basic commission. Here's a basic uh, commission objection handler. What's important about that? And they usually end up saying, well, you know, money, some form of money. You know, I completely understand it. And, and I have some clients that tell me what, what's most important to them is lowering costs. And I have other clients who think the most important thing is raising the price. But my clients, who are usually very savvy, the people I work with, I, I want to educate them as much as I can. They understand that the only thing that really matters is net. And then that becomes a script that you can use when they're talking about the discount broker. That's right. That's right. Are you netting more? I could charge you 10% commission, but if I get you 15% more than the market, tell me, did you net more or less? Right. And you remove this whole thing. Yeah. Another direction on that. Sorry, awesome. I can't go on. Go ahead. No, no, that's awesome. And I, I think that the only thing as we move to a next other question is from my point of view, I think it was it's obvious that internally I value least the marketing of the home in terms of what I bring to the table, John. Like, I, I, it's clear in my dialogue. I just put that aside. Uh, I do believe house to sell houses. I think most of us on this call would agree that the easiest part, if there's anything that's easy about what we do, is the pre-marketing marketing of the home, right? Running ads, uh, uh, scheduling showings, managing that process, that, that doesn't take a lot of skill. Your skill shows up when conflict arises, right? And that's going to arise in this section. And that's when you earn your commission. Because uh, it's stressful enough to sell a house. It is way more stressful that somewhere in that process, there is a, there is a condition or an objection or a condition that you can't overcome. And you're just now getting your aha with it. And now the deal is going to crater. And the moving truck that's scheduled to be there next Thursday it can't come and, and they can't be there and that how their sales gonna collapse. It is so critical that you are passionate about how you quarterback the transaction. And when you feel that passion, these the words will always be there, but that's where it starts, the belief. Where my objection is different from Sean's in a way, but his is just as good, just as good. It's brilliant. The difference you want to have all is, of these. The difference is what's at both of our core as we approach that question. How do we feel about the process in someone saying to us, the house is going to sell overnight. What do I need you for? I mean, you could almost come back and say, that's a great point. I mean, have you considered selling your home yourself? I mean, the confidence that would come, Millie, have you considered selling your home yourself? Oh, no, I wouldn't do that because, well, why wouldn't you? Because I don't have the time. Is there anything, you know, anyway, another question, but you can see, right, Sean, I just want to make that point. Right. While we're talking, throw some more, or raise your hand. And yes. What else are you getting right now? All right. Well, I'll throw a couple out. Okay. Sometimes what you get is the, um, I, I'm thinking of going with this other agent because I see their name everywhere. I think they're the local expert. And I think I'm going to, going to go with them. And this one I think is fun because there's a little acting. There's a little acting and that, and that makes things fun. When you say that, I say, oh, the neighborhood expert, I'm so sorry. I, I completely, you're looking to buy a home. I, I apologize. I, I totally misunderstood what we were doing here. Tell me more about buying a home. No, I want to sell my home. Okay, you have to help me understand then. We hire a local expert when we're buying a home. We want someone who knows that neighborhood inside and out. But when we're selling a home, we want an international expert. We want a marketing expert. We want a company that's number one. Wait, wait, wait. Maybe I misunderstood again. 
Are you thinking of only selling your home to your neighbors? Then I could see why you would hire a local expert. No, okay. Then I then I think we need to get thinking about how we're going to sell your home nationwide. We have no purpose in having a local expert do that. Hard for them to come back and say, that makes more sense. I need someone who has bus benches around me. Are you only selling to your neighbors? What's another one we hear? Good one. Well, I, I'll take a crack at that too. I, yeah, good. By the way, I, <laughs> I don't want to sound like I'm just patronizing you, but that, that's brilliant. Good response, Sean, but I expect I, that from you. I just tried to be funny. <laughs> that's why we pay you the big bucks. <laughs> uh, you know, I look at this uh, in a way and I'd say, you know, the neighborhood expert comment. Um, uh, you know, the first thing I want to do is uh, is endorse the agent, right? So, yes, Sean is a, Sean's a great agent. And, yes, Sean sells a lot of homes in this market. Um, but I'm not chopped liver. <laughs> what are your goals, Mr. Seller? Like, but by the way, have you ever, have you interviewed with Sean? Yes, uh, we did. And, and, and right now, you know, or no, we haven't. If they say, yes, we did, this is how you slam dunk the top producer. When you met with Sean, uh, did he go through a needs analysis? I mean, do you feel like Sean firmly understands the need to have your kids in Seattle by in three months? And did Sean cover with you uh, the risk in, or does he understand the risk that if you're not in Seattle in two or three months, how that's going to impact you and your family? Um, did Sean explain to you or did Sean cover with you the national syndication of how the property is going to be promoted and how important it is to, to, to did you talk about, was there a talking track about the, 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 the transaction management and the risks that are associated? Well, he didn't cover all that, but he covered some of those things, really. Um, and Sean guys are real piker. Well, no, I, I asked this uh, because uh, are these important, these are important issues to you, am I right? Yes. Well, the fact that he may or may not understand all of these goals that you have for yourself, um, how can you say with confidence that he understands what your goals and needs are? He, he's the number one agent, but you're telling me he, you're not sure he understands what your needs and goals are entirely. Um, how do you feel about that? Pretty much eliminated me. Well, that's what I'm trying to, I, I'm, I'm, it's hard because I don't have, I'm just spitballing here, everyone, but understand that if I were sitting with them, I would have had a list going of everything that they need in the sale of their home. And when it comes to a, another agent who's already interviewed and they, I'm getting an indication because they sell more houses that they're the leader in the clubhouse, well, I need to find a way to drop a torpedo in there without taking a shot at Sean, but talking about what my, the value of my skills in consulting and uncovering needs and making sure everything I do as it relates to their needs is my top priority. So that's again where my words would come from. It's just another approach uh, for you to consider. So that, um, and then again, you know, why, what's important to you in listing with the number one agent in the community might be a question or the number, the top agent. Right. Um, what they say is gonna matter right there. It'll probably have, and it may not have anything to do with the fact that you're the number one agent in the community, right? Right, you have to find out. We have, we have to explore. I wanted to, we're getting close. I wanted to throw one out that's not an objection handler, but a business generator or a sure. potential business generator. A lot of us are taught, you're at a cocktail party, you're at a barbecue, ask people what they do for a living. Because then out of reciprocity, they have to ask you what you do for a living. And then you get to vomit real trees all over. Here's a different approach. Ask them where they live. What neighborhood do you live in? And then they'll tell you. And then ask more questions about that. What do you love about that? How long have you lived here? Why is that place so such a favorite of yours? Do you love the school? At some point, they're going to be curious why you're curious. Are they thinking of buying a home there? Oh, no, no, no. I'm in real estate. One of the things my clients love about me is the knowledge I have of every neighborhood. And I get it from people like you. I really appreciate people like you helping me know every single mm -hmm. neighborhood. Now they know you're a realtor, but they're they're very impressed with who you are because you're not attacking them with a, a uh, have you thought about selling your home or do you want to buy, sell, or invest in the next 90 days or whatever that those tired old lines are. Ask them where they live and then explore that. Increase your expertise. Yeah. You might, and, and a follow-up to that as we wrap up, Sean, tell me about what you do 
Uh, and then they're going to say, well, I work at such and such, or I, I lead this, or I, I run this team, or, you know, whatever they say. Tell me about what makes you so successful. Be and curious. A, B, C. Always be curious. Not always be close and always be curious. Man, I tell you, every time I've ever walked into a home, when I'm walking through the property and I see the, the diploma uh, or I see the, an award that they've won, that is a softball. You know, and, and if you ask them authentically, not like, well, here's a chance for me to manipulate them, but here's a chance for me to understand them. And so tell me, what, this, what is this for? What, what did you do to be so successful? How, how have you become so successful in? Boy, once you do that, I mean, it's, it's like giving candy to their child. They really like you uh, when you try to understand and, 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 and appreciate who they are as a person first. So uh, just a last tip on that. Let's, I'm going to wrap up just with three directed takeaways. Normally, I hope you get a takeaway every Monday, but I want to point three out. Always, always start with knowing your own value. Yes. Always repeat and affirm and always explore. Never answer the question until you've explored what it means to them. Listen. Okay, we're going to stick. Explore. Oh, Listen, ask, explore. That's the track. 